Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My channel is de dedicated to exposing Watchtower deception, lies and cover up. My name is Marcy and I was one of Jehovah's Witnesses for over 30 years. I was first, I served as a regular pioneer for 10 of those years. I was first contacted in the door-to-door -door ministry back in 1987 and I finally left the organisation in 2022. This video is an expose video, which is what, what, what I love doing. I love exposing the false teachings of the Watchtower and its hypocrisy. Because if it was doing what was right, then I wouldn't be able to be doing this. But because it's made itself a hypocrite and is doing things that are wrong, many people, not just me, are exposing the things that they're doing. And so today, this video, I'm going to be um, doing what I do best, turning the Watchtower's own information against itself. And I'm going to be using this book, Survival Into a New Earth. Now, this is a book that I've had for a long time in my collection. I'm going to show you the inside cover, as I always do. This book was produced by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania in 1984. And, um, that's where it says it. Nineteen eighty four. So this book is full of gems that you can use to show witness the hypocrisy and the lies that the society have taught and how they are now sanitising everything and rebranding themselves to hide away the things they taught in publications like this one. Now, on page 116, it talks about the Catholic Church and the, and the Church of the Christendom being in affiliation with the United Nations. Well, I find this a very interesting subject because finding out that the that the Watchtower Society have been part of the United Nations was the second reason that I woke up uh, against uh, to what the Watchtower Society was actually doing. So I think that this is going to be an interesting expose. So let's get on with um, with it now. So. I just firstly want to say um, to all my subscribers and regular viewers that have asked where I've been for the last few weeks. I've just taken a little bit of a break. Um, I've been away to the beautiful Greek islands of Santorini, um, where I've got myself a bit of a sun-kissed look. And um, I've really had a bit of time out. And I think when you come out of something occult, like the watchtower and when you've been in it for so long and it can be very draining to keep going over things and you know you just sometimes need to just sit back and take a break from it so going to greece is what i did and there's a wonderful time i mean i'm in really good health i know some people are quite worried in case i've been poorly no i've not i've just been on holiday so let me just get on with this now because I'm back and, um, you know, this is a good video for people, for Jehovah's Witnesses who are watching. I know that I have an audience of active Jehovah's Witnesses and I've had some new uh, viewers and new subscribers who found my channel. I also want to just give a quick shout out to Watchtower Examiner and he is called Winston. He's got um, a, a wonderful YouTube channel and he, he is one of the my go-to um, uh, YouTubers like Christian and Jason Zelda and um, a Watchtower Examiner. They are what I call very credible 
and they produce the receipts to show what's really going on and i put a comment on one of his videos that he'd made and he has come back and watched one of mine and left me a really nice message and encouraged me to keep going so i just want to um tell my subscribers and my viewers that um watchtower examiner is a very very good youtube channel to watch and um, to really, if you're really searching for the truth about what's going on in the Watchtower organisation. So, right, I'm going to get on now because I've been talking long enough about hypocrisy of the Watchtower. Now, what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to give the definition of what hypocrisy is. So, according to the internet, it says... Hypocrisy is publicly telling someone they should do something when they themselves don't do it. Or telling someone publicly, publicly it's wrong to do something when they themselves are doing it. And it also defines religious hypocrisy as failing to practice what one is preaching. So is this what the Watchtower does? Well, I think it's what it does best. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go to this book, this uh, Survival Into a New Earth, on page 116, under this heading of the chapter, Dividing of People, over the kingdom issue. Now, we know that it th this chapter is talking about separating the sheep from the goats, and at that time, they were watched. I was teaching that the preaching work was the separating of the sheep from the goats. They later changed this and said that it would take place uh, during the Great Tribulation. So. What did he actually say about the United Nations? Shall we have a look? It says, so actually it's starting on page 115. Uh, one, one, oh no, 116. It says, the involvement with the church, of the churches in politics is well known. When the United Nations Charter was being formulated in 1945, Protestant, Catholic and Jewish delegations were on hand as consultants. In recent years, Popes of Rome have lauded the United Nations as the last hope of concord and peace and the supreme forum of peace and justice. The World Council of Churches, with membership of some 300 religious groups, have even provided funds to use in finance, to finance political revolutions. Yet Jesus Christ said to the Roman governor Pilate, My kingdom is no part of this world. And we know that Jesus said about his followers, they are no part of the world, just as I am no part of the world. So how is it then that while they are condemning the church for being involved with the United Nations, that they themselves became involved with the United Nations? Only they did it in secret. And so that most people, or most Jehovah's Witnesses, were not aware of this affiliation. And they were affiliated with the United Nations for nine years, I believe. And they remained a few, uh, associated and affiliated with it. And they probably would have been still to this day if it had not been exposed by the Guardian newspaper. 
Now, I've managed to find the Guardian newspaper article. And I'm going to bring it up on my phone. And so I went to Wikipedia. Which, um, just a minute. So I went to Wikipedia where it's, it tells us what the Watchtower teach has taught about the United Nations. So I'm just on Wikipedia now, just going to show you that. It says Jehovah's Witnesses teach that the League of Nations and the United Nations were set up as a counterfeit of God's kingdom. Joseph was the second president of the Watchtower Society, well, we know he was the third, condemns politicians, business leaders and clergy in their support of the League of Nations. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that the United Nations will soon destroy all other religions and turn against Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witness representatives have sought the services of UN bodies such as the United Nations Department of Public Information and the United Nations Human Rights Committee. Jehovah's Witnesses teach that the United Nations is the image of the wild beast referred to in Revelation 13, 1 to 18 and the fulfilment of the disgusting thing that causes desolation from Matthew 24 and verse 15. In practice, it says, Jehovah's Witnesses build the United Nations organisation as they do other governmental bodies of the world. That they exist by God's permission based on their interpretation of Romans 13, 1 and 2. So... If we scroll right down to the bottom of the article, it gives us some links and that you can click on. I'm going to just click on Jehovah's Witnesses link to the UN, queried by the Guardian newspaper. So I'm going to click on that and it takes us to this uh, article. Now, it says at the top in yellow, this article is more than 22 years old. And it is that because this is when it came out and was exposed by Stephen Bates, the Religious Affairs Correspondent for the, Uni uh, for the Guardian newspaper, sorry, on Monday, the 8th of October, 2001. Now, I'm just going to read what the article says. I'm still in holiday mode, so I've got a drink of juice with a strawberry. But anyway, let's just go to what it says. It says, The United Nations is being asked to investigate why it has granted associate status to the Jehovah's Witnesses, the fundamentalist US-based Christian sect, which regards it as the scarlet beast predicted in the book of Revelation. Disaffected members of the six million strong group, which has 130,000 followers in the UK, have accused the witnesses' elderly governing body of hypocrisy. 
in secretly accepting links with an organisation that they continue to denounce in apocalyptic terms. The UN itself admitted yesterday that it was surprised that the sect, whose formal name is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York, has been accepted on its list of non-governmental organisations for the last 10 years. A former member said, there is a glaring inconsistency which has emerged between the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society's frequent portrayal of the UN as an evil organisation and its behind-the-scenes attempt to curry favour with that organisation. Were individual members to be aware of any formal link, they would be devastated. By no stretch of the imagination could the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society be considered to share the ideals of the UN Charter, unless you suppose that destruction of the UN by God is consistent with the Charter. The witnesses most frequently encountered by non-members when they attempt to make doorstep conversations have based accusations of bad faith before. These have been most notably over the hierarchy's insistence that members should not accept blood transfusions and over accusations that sexual abuse of children by witness ministers in the US have been covered up. Followers who criticise the witness leaders or question their decisions are routinely disfellowshipped, which means fellow members, including their families, must shun them. And it goes on to discuss uh, blood components being acceptable and um, certain things to do with child abuse, which we're not discussing at this time, so I'm not going to read that. But going back to the UN, it says, the Watchtower Society has been denouncing the UN and its predecessor, the League of Nations, for 80 years, believing them to be a world empire of false religion predicted in the Book of Revelation. A recent publication since the organisation obtained its recognition describes the UN as a disgusting thing in the sight of God and his people. An internal document, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, describes its policy as theocratic war strategy. It claims in time of spiritual warfare it is proper to misdirect the enemy by hiding the truth. It is too unselfishly. It does not harm anyone. On the contrary, it does much good. Now, I've talked about theocratic war strategy before uh, in dealing with Geoffrey Jackson and the Australian Royal Commission and other areas it has been used. It says, it goes on to say, being recognised, being a recognised NGO with the United Nations as more than 1,500 organisations are, gives status, though not grants. To qualify, organisations must show they share the ideals of the Charter, operate on a non-profit basis, demonstrate interest in UN issues and the proven ability to reach large or specialised audiences and have the commitment and means to conduct effective information programmes about UN activities. Disaffected witnesses believe the association, which has not been publicised to followers, is intended to increase the cult's respectability to sceptical governments such as France's, which has refused to recognise it. 
Paul Gillis, a witness a spokesman in Britain, said, we do not have hostile attitudes to governing bodies and if we are making representation on issues to the UN, we will do so. There are good and bad bodies just as there are good and bad politicians. We believe what the Re Book of Revelation tells us, but we do not actively try to change the political system. A spokesman for the UN said, I think we may not be aware of their attitude, which seems to be really strange. So that's what that um, article said. A further article about the same thing to do with the um, Guardian said, hypocrite Jehovah's Witnesses abandoned the secret link with the UN. So let's have a look at that. It says, this is the same man. This is a further article. The Jehovah's Witnesses have hurriedly disaffiliated themselves from the United Nations within days of the Guardian story in which members accused the sect of hypocrisy for supporting an organisation it has repeatedly denounced privately. After the article last Monday, the organisation's New York-based hierarchy preempted a UN inquiry by agreeing to disassociate the witnesses from an organisation which it holds to be the scarlet beast named in the Book of Revelation. The Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York, as the sect is formerly known as a 6 million membership worldwide and 130,000 members in Britain. It had been secretly affiliated to the UN as an NGO for 10 years. Recognised organisations are supposed to demonstrate that they share the UN's objectives. But witnesses are instead told by elders to regard it as a disgusting thing in the sight of God and his people for allegedly aspiring to world domination like Babylon the Great, the Beast in Revelation. It says, within hours of the articles appearing in The Guardian and on its website on Monday and its posting on the Jehovah's Witness bulletin board, more than 14,000 people across the world have read it. By yesterday, there were 353 official posts and 325 message boards discussing the article and its revelations, with witnesses in the US demanding to see copies of the newspaper. So that's where the article um, ends. So, once again, we can see the hypocrisy of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. That it didn't try to defend itself for its reasons for doing what it did when it was affiliated and when it was discovered and made public, instead of trying to explain or give a reason, explanation or excuse, it disappeared associated itself straight away the very same week. That tells you that they know what they're doing is wrong. I want to finish this video by just um, looking at something. I'll 
Jesus Christ. Foot Jesus uh, Christ says at Matthew 23 and verse 28. Matthew 23, verse 28, it says, So you outwardly appear righteous to others, but within you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Well, those are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. I couldn't put it any better than that. I just wanted to show you um, from this book that the hypocrisy, is, is there, it's just as prevalent, if not more prevalent, than what we see in the church that they condemn. So I'm going to be using this book for quite a while to come because there's plenty of other things in here that I think you should know about that condemn the society as hypocrites. So, I want to thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please like, share and subscribe. And until the next time, I'll say bye.